the Corrado is Volkswagen's first full-blooded sports car. It combines advanced technology with driving pleasure and comfort. The name Corrado is derived from the Spanish verb corre, which means to run, to race or to sprint. It's an apt name for this innovative and dynamic sports car. Until now, the right-hand drive Corrado has only been available with a 16-valve normally aspirated engine. But for 1991, the Corrado will be available with either the 16-valve engine or an exciting supercharged G60 power unit. This G60 power unit offers good pulling power with outstanding flexibility. The high torque figure of the G60 engine is comparable with that of many 2.5 litre normally aspirated engines. The first part of the program outlines the operating principles and technical details of the G60 engine. Section 2 highlights the main points to be aware of when maintaining the engine and takes a brief look at the operation of the rear spoiler. After each section, remember to stop the tape when requested and refer to the workbook. The self-study books numbers 101 and 103 will also help you to understand these latest developments from Volkswagen. The supercharger, or G-charger, as it's more commonly called, was used in preference to a turbocharger for several reasons. The G-charger offers high torque and responsiveness even at low engine revs. This is in contrast to a turbocharger which only becomes effective after a certain amount of turbo lag. This means that the G-charger is particularly well suited to engines under 2000 cc. Further advantages include its quiet operation and relatively simple adaptation to exhaust emission control systems. The G-Charger was used in preference to other types of superchargers because of its high efficiency and durability. The name comes from the spiral-shaped main component, the displacer, which resembles the letter G. Incidentally, the width of each G-shaped spiral is 60 millimeters hence the name G60. The displacer and the two housing halves basically complete the unit. The displacer, which is mounted on two eccentric shafts, moves within the spirals of the housing. A small toothed belt connects the two shafts together to ensure accurate movement of the displacer. To ensure a good seal between the moving displacer and the spiral elements of the housing, special elastic seals are installed. Due to the low relative speed between the displacer and the housing, approximately 10,000 RPM, a long service life should be possible. The input, or drive shaft, of the G-charger is driven by the engine crankshaft via a multi-ribbed V-belt. The belt's tension is maintained by an automatic adjuster. The lubrication circuit for the supercharger is via a hose from the rear of the cylinder head and a return line to the sump. So how does the G-Charger work? The moving spirals of the displacer trap and squeeze the incoming air, so forcing it round the spiral and into the centre. From the centre of the unit, the compressed air is directed to the engine. Before the air reaches the inlet manifold, it passes through an intercooler. This reduces the temperature by approximately 55 degrees centigrade, depending on the operating conditions. The cooled, more dense air improves the filling of the cylinders and increases the power output. In the part load and idling ranges, the G-charger supplies more air than the engine requires. In this situation, excess air is returned to the inlet side of the supercharger via a bypass valve and duct. The bypass valve is fitted in the throttle housing, next to the throttle valve assembly. A small linkage connects the two valves. These valves work in conjunction with each other. When the throttle is closed, for example at idle, 
the bypass valve is open, allowing excess air to be directed back to the inlet side of the G-charger. As the throttle is progressively opened, the bypass valve is correspondingly closed, so increasing the flow of air into the engine. The operation of the G-charger, in conjunction with the bypass valve, limits the maximum boost pressure to about 0.7 bar. Under certain conditions, to reduce engine knock, particularly in the upper load and high rev ranges, it's necessary to regulate accurately the boost pressure. This is carried out by activating the idle stabilization valve, depending on information received by the Digifant control unit. At the correct moment, the idle stabilization valve is opened. This allows unwanted air to be directed back from the manifold to the inlet side of the supercharger, thereby reducing the boost pressure. In this way, it's possible to control smoothly and accurately the boost pressure. This section of the program highlights the main differences between the Digifant engine management system of the Corrado G60 and that of previous models. In addition, it outlines the checks and adjustment procedures that are pertinent to this engine and takes a look at the rear spoiler. The air flow meter of previous Digifant models is replaced by a pressure sensor integrated into the control unit. The pressure sensor is connected to the inlet manifold via a hose of a set length. The length of this hose should not be altered. The TCI ignition box is also integrated into this control unit. The air temperature sender, also formerly in the air flow meter, has been repositioned into the air duct between the intercooler and throttle housing. The temperature sender also houses the CO adjusting screw and potentiometer. Other information senders such as knock control, coolant temperature and throttle switches are located in similar positions to previous models. Before carrying out any checks and adjustments, make sure the engine is at operating temperature. As usual, refer to the latest workshop information before working on the vehicle, as settings and procedures do change. Firstly, a special voltage divider, part number VAG1473, is required to connect the test equipment to terminal 1 of the ignition coil. Alternatively, you can use VAG1367-8 to pick up ignition pulses from the king lead. This avoids you having to make any connection to the ignition coil. Remember, make sure the ignition is switched off before connecting or disconnecting any equipment. To check the engine settings, remove the breather hose and start the engine. Now remove the plug from the coolant temperature sender and in order to check the ignition timing, increase the revs to that quoted in the literature. Check the timing and if necessary correct it by moving the distributor. To check the idle and CO settings, rev the engine three times to over 3000 RPM and then allow it to idle. Now check the figures against those specified in the literature. Corrections can be made by turning the idle and CO screws alternately. Reconnect the temperature sender and again rev the engine three times to complete the adjustment procedure. Oh, and don't forget to refit the breather hose.
Further comprehensive information on checking the ignition timing control and fuel system checks are included in the workshop manual. In cases of poor performance, it may be necessary to carry out a boost pressure check to ensure the G-Charger system is working correctly. Before carrying out this check, make sure that all the preconditions shown in the manual have been met. Connect the pressure gauge to the inlet manifold using a T-piece. Make sure the valve on the gauge is open and start the engine. With the engine idling, remove the plugs from the coolant temperature sender and the CO potentiometer. This activates a special mode in the control unit to prevent the engine from being over revved while carrying out the boost pressure check. Now, fully open the throttle and holding it open, watch the gauge. It's important to open the throttle quickly or the correct reading will not be registered. The engine should automatically hunt while you check the pressure. Release the throttle when you've noted the reading. If the pressure is within the specifications, the check is complete. If not, consult the literature for possible fault areas. Remember to reconnect all hoses and plugs after completing the job. As we already know, the supercharger and other ancillary equipment is driven by a self-adjusting ribbed V-belt. If you need to remove the belt for any reason, it's first necessary to release the tension of the automatic adjuster by using this special tool. The water pump pulley is provided with an adjustment to ensure it runs in line with the crankshaft pulley. To alter the alignment, slacken the outer bolts and turn the hub until the two pulleys are in line. Retighten the bolts and recheck the setting. The last item in the program, the rear spoiler, is common to all Corrado vehicles. For United Kingdom vehicles, the spoiler is designed to raise automatically at speeds above approximately 45 miles per hour and lower as the vehicle slows down. When raised, the spoiler improves the downforce on the rear of the vehicle. In its lowered position, the spoiler blends into the contours of the bodywork to reduce drag and improve rear vision. A dash-mounted override switch allows you to raise or lower it for cleaning. When using this switch on some vehicles, you may experience a short delay in operation. The spoiler's movement is controlled by an electric motor and cables. A control unit located under the dash, a speed sender mounted in the rear of the speedometer, and an override switch complete the electrical circuit. A protection circuit in the control unit switches the power supply off after about 12 seconds if the spoiler does not move. In the event of an electrical failure, the spoiler can be manually operated after removing the tailgate cover. For a more detailed explanation of the operation, look in the self-study book 101. Information about the layout of the wiring and connections can be found in the current flow diagrams. Finally, just to remind you, the operating principles of the central locking and electric window circuits of the Corrado are similar to those of the Passat. These two subjects were covered in detail in video number 72. So. 
We hope you've enjoyed this brief look at the new G60 Corrado from Volkswagen and wish you every success with its maintenance. Thank you.